so I have upgraded my Ridgeline. I uh, was all set to buy my 2020 Honda Ridgeline Sport, uh, my white one that I've done a few videos on. I really, really liked that truck. I had it for just under two years and I put about 28,500 miles on it. It was a very, very positive experience um, during those 28,500 miles. Um, unbelievably smooth truck. Wonderful daily driver, one of the best daily drivers I've ever had. Um, very reliable. The only uh, issue I had that was fixed under warranty was I got um, water in one of the taillight lenses and that was fixed under warranty. I had no other issues, so it was perfectly reliable. Maintenance costs were reasonable. Um, it was a little bit of a bummer that I had to change the differential fluid at about 15,000 miles, but that wasn't too bad. Um, but uh, I was all set to buy it. It was actually a, a leased truck, and I was going to buy it from the leasing company, Honda Financial, for a very, very low price. Um, but before I pulled the trigger on buying that truck, I decided to go to two of my local Honda dealers. Um, the first one that I went to um, didn't really want to do much of anything um, um, on my trade, nor did they want to discount any of their vehicles. So I left that dealer kind of disappointed, went to another local Honda dealer, and much to my shock, I was able to negotiate a price on this 2022 Ridgeline RTLE of $7,000 off of MSRP. That is really, really an unbelievable deal considering the pandemic car market right now. Um, it's just really incredible how many vehicles are selling for a way above MSRP. And for me to get this for $7,000 under MSRP, it's kind of mind-blowing. I'm still kind of in disbelief that I got that deal on this truck. And it's a two trim levels higher than the Sport that I had. Um, so it's got kind of an overwhelming number of options. This is the most loaded vehicle I've ever had. Um, and I'll uh, go over some of the options that this has that my Sport didn't. So before I list any of those um, cool options that this has, I want to just mention the styling. Of course, this has the updated styling compared to my 2020. Um, the styling was updated in 2021. Got some big changes from the A-pillar forward. You can see the front end here is much more squared off much more butch, masculine looking. Vast improvement in my opinion in just pure looks over the uh, 2020 model that I had. And then if you go here to the back end of the vehicle, this is not a major thing, but I think it's pretty sweet. They've got the large dual exhaust tips poking out the rear. I think that also uh, really improves the rear end. And I noticed um, that the chrome strips that I had on my um, bumper on my 2020 are gone. Um, I didn't like those at all, so I'm really glad they got rid of those. This 2022 RTLE, it does have chrome door handles and chrome around the windows, and um, I'd much prefer that those be black. So my personal preference is not to have that chrome on this uh, truck, but it's a small thing that I'll, I'll live with that. So let's uh, get into some of the crazy options that this truck has compared to my 2020 Sport. So on the outside, um, a few things that this truck has that my 2020 did not have. It's got the utility package on it, so that includes the running boards, the roof rails, and the crossbars. Um, I don't really like all these three things all that much, although I do think that the, the roof rails and the crossbars will come in handy at times when I want to go camping and I want to use the bed for my camping stuff and I can put my little kayak on the on the crossbars. The running boards, you know, they kind of bump your pants and get your uh, pants dirty. This truck is low enough to the ground that you definitely don't need them to, to get into the truck. On the other hand, I live in West Michigan and they use an incredible amount of salt on the roads all winter here. And so I do think that these running boards will help protect the doors and the sides of the vehicle from road salt all winter. So that'll be kind of nice to have those on there. They seem to be covered with like a, a bed liner material, which I really like. Most of the other cool options that this thing has um, are on the inside with, um, I guess, one other exception. This has the truck bed audio, which I haven't even played with. Um, yeah, I will do a separate video on the truck bed audio. It's just a 
really strange feature that I, I also think will come in handy when I'm camping. So let's uh, look at some of the other options on the interior of this vehicle that my 2020 Sport did not have. All right, let's go over some of the many, many options that this 2022 RTLE has that my 2020 Sport did not have. Um, first thing being the seating. We've got gorgeous leather seats. Um, I had cloth seats in the 2020 Sport. Um, these are heated seats and power seats. Um, my 2020 Sport had manually adjusted seats. Um, this has power seats with two position memory for the driver's um, seat here. Also have leather wrapped steering wheel and that is also heated. Um, the heated seats and the heated steering wheel, I can't say enough about those things. Um, as a hunter and a fisherman and an outdoorsman to get back in the truck on a cold day and have the heated seats and the heated steering wheel, such a wonderful thing. I'm kind of surprised that none of my past Toyota trucks had a heated seats or heated steering wheel, but they didn't. So this is the first time I've had them and man, I highly recommend them. Um, we've got built-in Sirius XM in the stereo system. Speaking of the stereo system, this is a eight speaker, 540 watt stereo system with a subwoofer. Um, the system in the 2020 Sport was, was pretty terrible. Had fewer speakers, way less power, barely, barely adequate, I would say. Quality was pretty poor. And this is at the other end of the spectrum. This probably has the best sounding um, stock stereo of any vehicle I've ever driven. Um, we've got the power moonroof up here, power sliding rear window. My 2020 Sport didn't have a sliding rear window at all. That rear window was a solid piece of glass on the 2020 Sport. A couple little things this has that I really am happy about. We've got this knurled aluminum um, volume knob. I did not have a volume knob on my 2020 Sport. I know a lot of people who had Honda vehicles for a while there without the volume knob. They really let Honda hear about a, the lack of the volume knob. So I'm so glad they listened to their customers and they put them back. This thing feels really great to the touch and clicks real nicely when you turn it. Heated outside mirrors. I did not have heated mirrors um, on my 2020 Sport. And that's kind of a big deal here in West Michigan with our long cold winters. We've got uh, automatic dimming rear view mirror. I did not have that on the 2020 Sport. Another little thing this has is lights on either side of the visor mirrors. Um, they left those out as I guess a cost cutting measure on the 2020 uh, Ridgeline Sport that I have, which is super annoying. Got the uh, wireless charging pad down here for your phone. Although it does not have wireless Apple CarPlay, you do have to plug it in, which is not that big of a deal. But when you don't have it plugged in, you can just throw your phone on the wireless charging pad there. An exterior option that I forgot to mention, we've got a 400 watt AC inverter in the bed of the uh, truck. I did not have that on my 2020 Sport. That'll really come in handy during camping along with a uh, truck bed audio, I think. So a few more things this has that my 2020 Sport did not have. Got LED headlights, LED taillights, and then all the interior lights are LED and the truck bed lights are LED. Gotta love all the LEDs. And uh, it's got blue ambient interior lighting. Really subtle, but I really like that. And it has an acoustic windshield um, and it's noticeably quieter. My 2020 Ridgeline Sport was very, very quiet, but this one's even quieter. I mean, we're talking luxury car quiet on the inside. So there it is, my 2022 Honda Ridgeline RTLE, um, all-wheel drive, of course. I think I've gone over to the Honda side uh, for the foreseeable future after driving Toyota trucks for many years. I still love Toyota trucks, but my experience with my 2020 Ridgeline Sport and now with this new 2022 Ridgeline RTLE has been so positive that I, I I probably will continue to drive Ridgelines going forward instead of switching back to Toyota. Um, we'll see about that. This is another lease, but I negotiated such a low cap cost that I could buy it from the leasing company at any time for a really great price. So maybe I'll end up buying this one and keeping it. Maybe I'll end up buying it and selling it for a profit after driving it for a couple years. Maybe I'll do another trade in if I get a, another amazing deal like I did when I traded in my 2020 Ridgeline Sport. We shall see, but uh, I've got about 700 miles on this already, um, driving it over the last couple weeks, 
and every one of those miles has been truly wonderful. Um, it seems to have a better build quality than my 2020 Ridgeline Sport, and that doesn't surprise me. Both Honda and Toyota tend to improve their build quality over time, so I'm not at all surprised to see like the panel gaps and overall build quality on this significantly, noticeably better than my 2020 Ridgeline Sport. So. I'm really looking forward to driving this over the next couple of years. All the hunting, fishing, kayaking, camping that I do. It's just a really wonderful daily driver and vehicle for the all around outdoorsman like I am. So thanks a lot for watching.